Hello crafty friends, this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. So nice for you to stop in. I have this fun little craft made with the solo cups and I did see this on another person's channel and so I will link that video in my description box. And so basically we're going to trim it off. Um, this is going to become the top of the, the pitcher. And then you'll want to trim it so it looks more like, you know, where you're going to pour something out. This is just a fun little thing. You can do this with, you know, leftover cups or whatever. Now, her video, she was using uh, smoother cups, and I kind of like those better, but this is what I had. Now, this I'm just showing you. I'm putting it on a bottom. I didn't know you know really how to put the bottom on and in hindsight I probably should just glue this on. Um, I ended up taking this bottom off because I didn't like how it turned out and so that you'll see that. This is where I'm going to uh, put the two pieces together and you I did end up putting some of the tape just to kind of seal it. And then I did get out my thicker, the Dixie Bell chalk paint, and this is called Drop Cloth. And I'm just going to use this as like a base coat. And I ended up going over it a couple of times and then just allowing that to dry. And then I got to looking at it and I did not like how that tape looked on it. And so um, the bottom all just got removed. It was inspiring to see this other lady's um, YouTube channel with, you know, her making hers because she did such a nice job. So I took off the bottom and then I just painted it up and I thought I'm just going to leave it that way. But obviously it'd make it stronger, you know, if you had a bottom on it. I am just taking, you know, just some really thin cardboard and I'm going to make a handle. Just bend that in place and glue it with the two glues and hold it in and then allow it to dry. And then just go over it with the paint. And then the rest of the video pretty much just shows I'm, I'm going to um, be using like a silver and then there's a uh, let's see I had a black and gray and just using those colors to just make this look galvanized and once I was pretty much satisfied with what I had I then I was gonna put on you know the uh, image and I'll show you how to do that and that's a fun technique of stamping on tissue paper and it works beautifully because the thing with that is you don't see really any edges. And so I'm just kind of going with maybe doing some detailing work. And as I went with it, then I got the sponge out and I'm putting white, like I said, the white, the black, the grays. And just kind of add however you want. By the time it's all said and done, there isn't a whole lot of that base color showing. Um, but I do like how it turned out. This is kind of how you make a galvanized look. The sponge brush or the sponge works really good. Um, some companies have these. Stampin' Up! does have these as well, and I've used them for years for crafting and just adding a little grunge to things. You can see how it's kind of coming together. This is an Iron Orchid Design stamp, and this is where I'm going to just put some ink on it and apply it to that tissue paper, and it dries immediately. And then I trimmed it down to just about to the, you know, right to the edge. And then um, I'm going to Mod Podge that onto my picture. Now 
Now since it's really thin, I'm only going to put it on the plastic there and then I'll just apply it down. Just be real careful, you know, with tissue paper, it's very fragile at this point and just do your best and trying to, uh, you know, flatten that out and getting it in those grooves. Just adding a little black, you know, to make it, uh, you know, more farmhouse looking, adding in the little details. It's kind of fun because it's um, it's messy. It's, uh, you know, you, do, you can get to do however you want to do to make it yours. You may want it, you know, a color. I just kind of wanted to go with this. And then I did add in some more of the colors in by the handle. You can kind of see I'm adding in some darker just to give it a little aged look. I did show this to my hubs and he was amazed that it was a solo, two solo cups glued together. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, isn't that fun how um, paint can create something and make it look so different. And there it is with a few sprigs of green in it. And I just love it. I may be doing techniques like this in the future. I just had a lot of fun with it. I hope you give it a try. See what you come up with. DIY number two. This turned out to be one of my favorites. I went to Dollar General and I did pay $5 for this because it had more, you know, it was a little more sturdy than something you get from Dollar Tree. And you know, what would be even better is if you could get it at a garage sale or something, you know. Um, anyway, I am going to put black cardstock in there. I put the back back on. I removed the, uh, um, the, the stand on there. I didn't show that I did that, but I did because I'm going to be putting on a box and that's going to make this thing stand up. And so these are rub-ons and I sell them in my Etsy store and I'm using this one with the farmer's market and it's super easy. You take the backing off and putting it on glass, boy does that stick. And then it comes with a little stick and you just rub it on and peel off the topping or the top. All right, so here's the top top piece and then you'll notice when I cut out the I went and wanted to put some flowers on there and so you'll see how I'm doing the same technique I put that down on that glass and I tell you what that stuck see how I pulled it off and it just peeled in half so if you're going to be putting it on something so, you know, it just really adheres well, make sure you get it in the, the spot you want. And it ended up being just fine. Um, I was able to match it together. These are a couple of little signs that I've gotten from Dollar General, and I'm sure there was only, it was only a dollar. And so I got a couple of these, and this is kind of my base for the box. And I don't want those to show on the inside, so I'm just making them dark. Just a little paint in the inside. Okay, and then I did go through my papers. I wanted them to look wood. And so uh, just going to Mod Podge them onto the back side and that's gonna become the outside of this box. So with this paper, it was thicker, so I did end up putting a coat on the paper and also in the wood. Make sure it's good and dry. And um, I will show you that I did use um, a file to do some sanding. Here I'm just showing that I'm using that same paper and I'm going to um, apply it to these really large, um, they're like a gigantic pop popsicle stick. And I did get those at Walmart a long time ago. Um, they are thin enough where you can kind of trim them with a junky old scissors. You can use, you know, something to cut them, whatever, you know, you have. And then just showing you that I, I did uh, sand off the uh, paper 
and I'm just eyeballing things and going to I ended up putting those all together with a combination of hot glue and Aline's glue and that would be you know the the instant hold and then the hold that lasts forever and so here is uh, just the wood glue that works really good with wood on wood and just gonna pop that on and hold it for a few seconds now I'm also going to put some flowers in here and so I got out my floral foam did not even unwrap it because it kind of helps so it's not so messy and just gonna put some of that greenery I got a package of that at Dollar Tree pop that in so you'll never see the foam and then just pop in some flowers I just trimmed them eyeballed things and um, I'm just gonna show you you know I'm just popping in flowers do however it looks good to you use what you have these flowers were already cut. I just had to trim them down because I've used this stuff in a different video. And sometimes I just want to, you know, use things in a different way. I get tired of looking at it. And so I kind of tear it apart and then I'll just keep the flowers for another project. Then if there's any bald spots, if you know what I mean, you can put more of that little green in there. The green's just so much fun. And that kind of covers, covers it all up. And here it is. I love how this turned out. It's cuter than even what I imagined. Um, I, I just love those uh, decals. They're just so nicely made and done. Easy to do. What a fun craft to do for an afternoon. I'm hoping you like this too. We've got more fun things. I'm doing some tiered tray cuties here coming right up. DIY number three. Okay, I got these at Target. They were a dollar. I picked up a few of them and I'm just going to, you know, apply some white paint just to that base. And I decided I love the gray. Wasn't gonna do one thing to it. It took two coats of the Waverly white chalk paint and make sure everything's good and dry. And while I was waiting for that to dry, I got these out. I picked them up yesterday at a Dollar Tree. And I am going to put some truffle on there to make cute little chocolate bunnies. And then we're gonna dress up that cute carrot. I did also see they had little uh, eggs and I regrettably did not pick up the eggs, but uh, I may see them again in another Dollar Tree. So using that Waverly pumpkin color, just going to make our cute little carrot. And then the green I chose was Scallion and that's another Waverly color. I just kind of thought it needed, you know, a little brightness to it and that is the perfect color for an Easter spring, you know, decor piece. And then when everything was good and dry, I went over it with my ink pen and just kind of added in some details. And you've got to put a bow on it. I've got some cute ribbon and I just put a cute little ribbon on there with some hot glue. And now I'm just going to put it all in the little shadow box after I do these cute little uh, cottontail bunnies. And there it is, super fun, easy to do, and you know, just uh, a nice little tiered tray thing for Easter. I can put that out. Um, I've got a couple more items coming up. And here is the next one coming right up. Now these, I um, wanted to just make some carrots and of course it's all gonna be small. And I had just a piece of this ribbon left over um, and I'm just going to make a triangle and uh, going to put a little stuffing on it. 
for sure it'd be easier if it was larger um, but I you know wanted it small for a tear tray um, I was going to ask you all do you know of like any kind of um, I'm not sure some kind of a glove that would work for when you're crafting like this because this wasn't so hard it was just the heat from the hot glue and you know it kept burning my fingers a little bit and then I you know wasn't able to hold it when I wanted and I just thought maybe you know other people have had this problem and maybe there's some kind of glove rather than those little tip pieces a glove or something that a person could use because then I could have really handled this well What's your thoughts on that? Have you used anything like that? Let me know in the description or in the comments if you have. So I ended up making three of these cute little carrots with the gingham look to them. And so I trimmed off the top and we're going to use some of this uh, raffia and um, make the tops for the carrots. And that raffia, what I've done is buying, I've bought those little skirts that you get at Dollar Tree. Um, it's like a little, you know, a little raffia skirt. And then just put a little twine or something around the bottom just to kind of tie it off and make it super cute. All right, and like I said, I made three of those. Typically what you're gonna wanna do when you are you know, doing some kind of decor, you're gonna wanna do an odd number. So I ended up making three of those and then I'm making two of these little uh, burlap ones and I just rolled them up because they're just gonna get uh, popped into a cup. Same thing, you know, add the raffia and a uh, little ribbon around it and however you want to do it. And then to make everything a little elevated, I did put some more of that greener greenery in there. Pop it in however you want. And then I wanted to put a little sign and kind of, um, you know, do a little tag on it. So carrots for sale. And I like this little cup. I got it at Hobby Lobby. And I'm pretty sure it's it was listed for $5 and I got it half off. So I'm sure it was a couple, you know, $2.50. And so I want to use this again. It's white. It's going to work with just about anything. And so I didn't want to really glue anything to it. And that's why I'm doing it this way. And there you have it, another tiered tray cutie. So much fun and just basically using scraps. And we've got one more tiered tray thing to make. Now this is something I picked up when I was at a craft show there was um, a company that's here in Minnesota and not very far from where I live and they make this stuff with their um, their I want to say it's called a CNC machine um, and so I bought this knowing I'd want to decorate it later and so I'm just going to show you and I will link their company in my description box um, what I've seen is they've got a Facebook uh, page and so you can check it out there. I'm not sure if they do shipping or anything, but if they don't, there's a lot of companies that do, and Etsy has a lot of options too. And so it was kind of fun. Everything's pretty much done. I just needed to put the, the paint and glue it down. I started out with this blush pink, which I absolutely love, but it wasn't dark enough, so I put a little red in it and made it a little darker, and I'm glad I did. Those, um, that light pink was not showing up. And then um, got out this Waverly Pool color, which I haven't used in a while, but it is so Easter-like. It just worked perfectly. Now that hop this way is engraved in, in the wood 
and so I'm just trying not to put too much paint on it so then the paint would go in you know where the dark is and I did pretty good until I got to the W and the A and then I did accidentally get some paint in it and so I'll show you how I fix that so I've got a really little brush and I've got a little bit of dark or I mean brown paint on it and just going to fill it in because it, like I said it is engraved inside the wood and just kind of run it along in there and then I decided to make white bunny feet and trying to be real careful so I didn't you know mess up those cute little lines And using a Lean's glue, whatever white glue you wanted, I'm just going to use, you know, a little applicator and put glue on the back. That seemed to be the best way to do it. Elmer's glue would work too. Um, I guess I wouldn't uh, probably apply it directly to it. I was just thinking just to keep it nice and neat, you'd want to do it this way. And just pop in those pieces and I love how it turned out. Have you all seen those, uh, all the wood items that have, people have been coming out with? They're just so fun and it's so cool how you can, you know, color them different colors and you can even switch out how you want to do this. It was kind of neat how this one had the bunny trail right there so I knew where to put it. This is a final look at what we've got here. Those tiered tray cuties, loving them. And that little bunny going in the pot, that is a previous video. I can put that video link in my description box from last Easter. And thank you all for coming, my friends. I appreciate you. Please like and subscribe to my channel. It does help it grow. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.